Good day students. So we are going to uh, discuss the standard setting bodies at a global scenario. And we're going to apply the five W's approach. What again our five W's approach? These are who, why, what, when, and where. So we're going to start with who. Who are the standard setters globally? And it is actually affected by, first, this is the logo. It is your International Accounting Standards Board. And the second one is the FASB, which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board. So, uh, there are other organizations that who are standard setters, but this would be locally, domestically, okay? But at the global scenario, these are the two major um, board that actually uh, make it, uh, making significant influence no? in the preparation of the standards to be followed in the, in the FS preparation, okay? And... Let's talk about the details of your uh, ESB and FASB no? on a holistic perspective. And ESB is uh, the one who made the International fin Financial Reporting Standards. And it is actually um, being uh, uh, used by 166 jurisdictions or actually uh, country. Okay, how about fast B? No, if it is fast B, if it is fast B, it uses GAAP. Okay, and or rather, it uh, issue a generally accepted accounting principle, and it is at the uh, it covers the different states no, in the US. Okay. And in terms of the history of uh, your International Accounting Standards Board and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, who are the other entities involved in the development of the standards? They are the International Accounting Standards Committee for uh, ESB and Committee on Accounting Procedure and Accounting Principles Board for FASB. Okay, so let's take a look at the period that uh, your ESB had been uh, organized. It was actually before uh, IASC, no? and it was uh, in 1973 that uh, it was born, no? or it was actually uh, approved. Then in 2001, ESB has been formally uh, started. It uh, was changed from IASC to ESB. How about your FASB? Your FASB started in 1938. It is before CAP. Oh, ano uli CAP natin? Si Pino, no? And in 1959, it is by APB. Then, it's almost the same with, with uh, IASC. And up to now, it's still FASB. Okay? Then, um, since our Philippines, no? or rather Philippines, is uh, the, the standards we follow is the one promulgated by the... In, the IASB or the International Accounting Standards Board, then we'll go into the details of who is uh, IASC, no? And there will be a separate material for ESB details, okay? And the International Accounting Standards Committee, as previously mentioned, was actually uh, organized in 1973 by 10 countries, okay? And in 1982, the members of um, International Accounting Standards Committee uh, 
are already part of IFAC. No, lahat dapat ng nag-member, no? Yun man dapat. But almost all of the sponsoring members of the International Accounting Standards Committee is a member already of IFAC because IAC in 1977 is the one who actually uh, organized IFAC, the International Federation of Accountants. Now, uh, in 1997, no, it's how many years? It's more than a decade, diba? That there is a need for them to change the structure because uh, uh, it, there, uh, with, with the demand for harmonization of the standards, okay? And so, they uh, actually have the strategy working party. And this party, no? In uh, 1998 and in 1999 of December and November respectively made a publication of the discussion paper and the final recommendation of which this was accepted by the board in 1999 of December and as to the members of the council or the committee rather it was finally approved in May 2000 and um, so as of 2000 of July 1, they renamed, no, or they organized, no, they changed the International Accounting Standards Committee or EAC to ESB. And formally, it started its uh, operation in April 1, 2001, under the IFRS Foundation, no, in order for them to issue the international fin financial reporting standards okay now if these are the timeline timeline of international accounting standards committee how about the structure uh, the EAC has a board no which is similar to to IAS, IASB if we're going to tackle it later of which there are 30 uh, 13 country members and three additional organization members Apart from uh, IASC board, it uh, do have observer members for them to have healthy discussions, no? And the different issues and perspective be addressed. And take note that PASB is a part of it, diba? You know, the PASB is part of it, As, aside from the European uh, Commission and EOSCO, okay? Then, uh, we do have the consultative group, the... The, the Standing Interpretation Committee, the Advisory Council, and the Steering Committee. This comprises the International Accounting Standards Committee who actually issues the... What does it issue? It issues the International Accounting Standards. That's what they call it before. Okay? Now, who are required to follow or who are permitted to follow the standard set by ESB. Actually, um, the firms covered are uh, the pu public accountable entities. Okay. Uh, but take note, tingnan nyo class. Almost everyone permitted lang. Diba? Whether it be listed company, whether it be financial institution, or foreign security issuers, or SME. Why? Because uh, the one who would cover them, the entity, will be who, wherever they are operating with. Say, for example, they're operating in the Philippines, then they are covered by the Philippine law. So, whatever is mandated by the Philippine law. Okay? That's why uh, we adopted the IFRS. Okay? So, permitted siya. Okay, then, uh, how many? No? If we have 166 jurisdictions, as of 2018, uh, in 2020, as of 2018, uh, we, we have 144 who use uh, uh, the IFRS for all of their publicly listed companies. Okay, um, so in terms of Ayan, required. And then, uh, the others are already uh, permitted. Okay? Then, how about FASB? No. The FASB 
it covers pri public, private, and not-for-profit organization. Um, and normally, they are required for publicly traded companies. And the others are actually somehow uh, permitted. Okay. Now, where is your ISB? Your IS uh, is in London and your FASB is in US. Okay. And um, why do we have the this uh, global setters, standard setters? Because we would like to have tignan yung class. High quality, understandable. When you say quality, what's that? Relevant and faithful representation and globally accepted. That's why if you took, take a look at the website of uh, IFRS Foundation, it uh, actually details uh, each country's uh, level of implementation uh, in terms of the IFRS that they have adopted. Okay. Then, uh, how about FASB? Transparent, inclusive, useful, which is part of the almost similar, almost the same, diba? Uh, with the indicator of high quality. Because for it to be high quality, when we say transparent, there is no secret. No? Uh, the information you provide is indicative of the nature of the business no transparency is uh, crucial because of course when you are providing financial information that's why you are looking at listed firms definitely if you are listed then you are very transparent and useful if it is understandable right it cannot be useful if it's not understandable and why inclusive process because you have to make sure that all of those who would be affected are part of the a process when you develop it okay and uh, when when it comes to ESB take note that it again ito, 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 class, oh. you see there's still the word transparent and comparability definitely firms in you know US and the other jurisdiction covered by uh, your your ESB, this would be a question. No? What you can only compare will be countries using IFRS base uh, FS. Okay, so later we'll have we'll ha we'll look into the listed firms. Which one are also listed in US and which one are also listed in uh, other? Uh, stock exchanges so that we would be able to have a sample for compare if their their information is really comparable no and common language for financial reporting why it would be a common language because you're using uh, the same standards and integrity will be promoted no because uh, you do follow no specific uh, standards again okay Likewise, with consistent application. Okay. And so, what is uh, given? Yan. Sabi natin kanina, it is IFRS and it is principle-based. So, we, we need to discuss in detail what do we mean by principle-based. And in GAAP, it is rules-based. So, yan class yung uh, the first thing that you need to remember that IFRS is principle-based. And GAAP is rules-based, uh, the one uh, formulated by uh, ESB and PASB, respectively. And how come that principle base is subjective? It is subjective because the accountant uh, is given no, the prerogative to exercise his own judgment, given the set principle, uh, since... Uh, the principles are dependent upon the, uh, the application is uh, dependent upon on the certain situations which uh, there are times that you need to independent there are times but actually most often at all times no you need to exercise your judgment that's why the um, inherent risk here is 
because you're you're exercising your judgment as an accountant you can be held accountable under legal situation and because uh, there's a flexibility be, why flexibility it provides flexibility principle based kasi nga diba you are exercising your judgment so uh, there there will be restriction in terms of standardization okay and so if we're going to compare that with your GAAP issued by FASB, it is prescriptive. Ibig sabihin, take back approach yan. You, you have specific rules to follow. Whether you like it or not, you must adhere. Yan, yan, you must adhere. But the good thing about it is, it promotes standardization. Siyempre, ano yan, klase? There, there is, a, of course, a trade-off. Diba? Because you have to exercise your judgment and you do have your flexibility it does now restrict standardization. Unlike, if it is prescriptive, you you do follow specific rules, so it promotes standardization. Now, what are the difficulties if it is rules-based? No? Because it is a uh, bright line test, no? then it would really be a challenge to achieve comparability between companies. And sometimes, uh, these rules can be circumvented and can override. Why is it that uh, it the, the GAAP is rules-based? Because of the scandals no? uh, that had happened for, for, for so... Uh, if, if, you, if you observe, um, most often there are scandals. No? And for every scandal, there are, norm, there are sometimes rules that you are devising for you to prevent that particular standard uh, rather for you to prevent with that particular scandals okay and because there are difference no with ESB and FASB in 2002 uh, we have the Norwalk uh, agreement which actually uh, looking into the convergence and there would be a separate material for this, aside from the details of what ESB is all about. So, that's why um, what you, the, the, at the worldwide level, there's already a move for, for harmonization and, and convergence of ESB and FASB. So, we have to take a look at their progress now. Okay? So, what are our key takeaways? You have the five W's of the standard makers. I hope you can recall your who, what, when, where, why. And what did we learn? What's our food for thought? We have the uh, key uh, information on ESB and FASB uh, in relation to IFRS and GAP, which we are again going to have a separate material for this. And we discuss how different it is with rules-based and principle-based, okay? So, have a blessed day. If you have any question, uh, you can give your feedback. Thank you.